to my channel, The Grim Reader. This is my weekly reading wrap-up, otherwise known as The Grim Chronicles, for the week of the 18th week. Yes, and I am... One of the many things that has been going on this week with me is I've been just going really into the plan planner world. And so this is my beautiful... I am in love with it. My beautiful weeks, uh, Hobony two weeks with this beautiful cover, which I didn't think I would love as much as I do, but I really do. And so I'm looking, and one thing it does is it tells you which week we're in. So this is the 18th Grim Chronicle, and this is the end of the 18th week. So yeah, let's get to it. Uh, it's been an odd week. I think I say that every time, but it's always the case. And so what was kind of odd about this week Including and up to today, today was an odd day, which reminds me, I don't even have the book that I finished here, but I think I'll just do the, the insertion. I mean, it's back there, I can go get it. Um, so the big thing is that I finished teaching. So we're transitioning to the summer, which is kind of odd because today was so cold. As you can see, I'm still all scarfified here. It was, I would say it was barely the 50s. And when I went out in the afternoon briefly, it was cold and rainy and very wet so you know beginning of April, uh, May pretty cold considering that we've had some pretty warm days so it's always kind of up and down so anyway uh, so the big thing was moving out of the semester and I was very very happy to be done with zoom teaching because I really hadn't enjoyed it and I had sort of I had to repress my how much I actually hated it I don't know if people do this too, but if you're in a situation that can't be helped, you kind of just talk yourself into going with emotions or, or not hating it as much as you do. And now at the end, I can I can fully say how much I really disliked Zoom teaching um, because it's over. And we will enter into the classroom in the fall, first day of teaching. It's so funny that we call it fall, but it is the fall semester, but it starts in August. So, you know, it's still summer basically. But it's going to be August 23rd, Monday. I will enter into the classroom, probably still masked which is fine. I'm thinking I might, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to drink some of my decaf that I have here. I might wear a mic. I don't, I, I could see myself being mic'd up because I want them to hear me say Guten Tag. I'm, you know, I'm teaching first year German again. That might be a way to, I mean, even though it's a little bit awkward to be masked and wearing a mic, but that'd be, at least they'll hear me clearly. I mean, it's not such a big room or anything, but Maybe I'll do that. We'll see. So, and I, in general, am bad with transitions. So whenever we go from one place to the one situation to an next, I have a hard time <laughs> adjusting. And that was very true this week, too. There's also been some stuff that I don't really want to get into that may have contributed to the fact that I was very scattered in terms of... I could have been doing a lot more reading than I did, is what I'm getting at. But, you know, maybe I'm not the only one where just because you could be reading more in terms of time doesn't really necessarily mean you do read more. We we sometimes, you know, we don't do, it's like a contrary and contrary type thing. So I was very scattered and um, I did, so I did manage to finish the short book that I had started, um, which was uh, Lolly Willows. I just finished it today, pretty pretty late in the day. And so once again, these thoughts are going to be very preliminary. And this is part of the 1900 to 1950 read along that we're doing. Lolly Willis is an extremely strange, delightful, but not for everyone, novel. And so, um, so Lolly Willows is this, so, and it's quite, so uh, Sylvia Townsend Warner I have to I have to go back and check her to her biography, but she was a total badass, <laughs> which I didn't really know, and yay her. Uh, and so this was published in 1926, and she sort of, you know, she I didn't know this. She's a um, lesbian left wing communist uh, writer from from England. Her background is, seems to me, from what I gather, pretty bourgeois, if not to say upper class. And so this is a strange novel from 1926. So this is interwar, which is in a which is a fascinating time period that I am very um, in love with. And so I could see that basically it's about this this uh, 
the unmarried woman, the plight of the unmarried woman in, in, in England and her, the fact that she becomes invisible in this household of the stodgy, boring household of her relatives, Henry and Caroline. And um, I, right off the bat, I have to say the writing is superb. The writing is very good. Strong, strong writings. Uh, very British, very poetic, you know, good, good writing, strong. And so she, but and and so for a lot of the novel, it's almost like so. Where is this going? Is this sort of you know Barbara Pym esque, mm, that kind of plight of the unmarried woman, you know? Um, but in a way, the writing's a little bit different. Even of course, it's earlier than Pym. But so you you sort of get the sense of I'm not quite sure where this is going. And I had heard rumors about what it was about, but I didn't really see that until fairly late in the day. Although I think if I were to reread it, and I kind of want to reread it, um, I would sort of see hints of what is to come earlier on, because there are, there are those hints. Um, and so what happens is she gra well, it's not even that gradual. It's pretty much one day she co co goes in and buys a, a map and a guidebook to the Chilterns, which is this area. I guess it's between. It's sort of like. On the way to Oxford from London, this hilly area, but it's full of little villages, apparently, the Chilterns. Um, and so she decides um, to move there to this tiny little village. This and, and it has a great name. It's called Great Mop, which I think is fantastic. And so she decides to move there. All her, she sort of, she's lived with the family for twenty years. You know, that's a long time. And, and 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 in the meantime, she has this one discussion with the with her brother, I think Henry, who's basically like invested her money unwisely, such that her own inheritance, her own money, is much less than she than it should have been. Because she asks for it, and he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, it's it hasn't done as well, but don't worry, we'll we'll take care of you." Sort of like, and I think that's indicative of her not having. Like the fact that she's kind of given over her her financial sort of um, independence to to the to him and to the family, and so she breaks away and goes to live in this village. And then comes a sort of then comes a sort of almost my favorite part of the book is her really enjoying living independently in this village. Although she is she is sort of um, in someone's house, but she really likes the person she, that she's. Um, um, renting a room from Mrs. Leek and Mrs. Leek is a good cook and they have good conversations and um, and and what we have here is it's the kind of book that went back when back in the day when I was doing research so the person I did research on Bettina von Arnim one of the things I was interested in is how she would portray specifically as you know and this is 19th century German lady going out into nature and having her her adventures in nature and you know basically just solitary walks in the forest or interacting with a tree or walking beside a river uh, almost a sort of a communal almost like a merry marrying nature kind of feel to them so sort of highly romantic in a certain sense somewhat erotic, eroticized interactions with trees and stuff. Uh, and the, a, a deep feeling or deep sense of well-being and being looked after in, in nature and by nature. And we, we see this with Lolly too. She really enjoys c being out in nature because it's as if what, what uh, Warner does really well this deep and and very deep sense of well-being and peace and and being uh, not having to think about the world think about how you're overlooked think about how you kind of think about how you don't really like people that much most people think about how most inter social interactions are just not that enjoyable for you for 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 whatever reasons lolly is a very strange person her actual name is laura and she's she's someone you don't really warm to her even as a character even though with her you know it's her it's her story definitely 
but she's sort of not effusive, she's not very emotional, she's just lolly, she's just, uh, she is who she is, and so these passages where she's really kind of having a good time sitting in a in a field or there's this there's the, there, there are these scenes that sort of verge sort of it's starting to get a little bit supernatural there's this one scene where she's out at night and she hears a train and she kind of has these weird emotions about this train and then she suddenly realizes that the train is going to Paddington and it's almost like how could she see the train so clearly it's it's almost supernatural uh, and and uh, so there's there's that going on, and then um, at some point it it turns into I think it's yeah there's a scene where she comes home maybe after one of these inter these strange nights or something, and there's a cat in the room a kitten, and uh, she the it's, it states in, in here yeah a small kitten. Uh, Laura did not like cats, but this creature, so small, so intent, and so ferocious, amused her into kindly fe into kindly feelings. How did you come in here? Did you come in through the keyhole? She bent down to stroke it, and she kind of um, decides that this is uh, the devil. This is Satan, and so and then on the next page it says here she. Laura Willows in England in the year 1922 had entered into a compact with the devil and it's capitalized. And so she's convinced of the fact that she, that she's a witch and that she's also sort of a follower of Satan, which I do think, you know, I think this is going to be a book that for that, for simply for that reason is going to make some people to this day uncomfortable. Um, not me, not, or not me, not, not for the same reasons, not me. I mean, that didn't make me uncomfortable. Um, it, only in the sense of, uh, I'm not quite sure of the connection between witchcraft and paganism and Satanism. I'm not sure if that's an actual, and so, you know, what does Kathy, the ex-researcher, ex, ex do? She goes and finds an article by Kate McDonald, who is on the Twitter, called Witchcraft and Nonconformity in Sylvia Towns and Warner's Lolly Willows and another book. Oh yeah, this is an interesting writer, John Buchan's Witch Buchan's Witch Witchwood, nineteen twenty-seven. And so she's gonna contextualize for me uh the 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 sort of the how, where witchcraft as a cultural phenomenon falls in the twenties and in England. Uh she already on this in this first paragraph she mentions Yeats and his devotion to theosophy. She mentions Alistair Crowley and some of the cults. And so that's, I think, what Warner is doing too. She's sort of, it's, a, it's, 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 she's doing something with deciding to make Lolly a follower of Satan. And, and so f from a 2020, 2021 perspective, what it does is it means that it's a little bit, some people have sort of criticized her as writing this proto-feminist work and yet and yet lolly is sort of in love so to speak with satan and it's kind of hilarious because um satan does appear but satan satan is very very mild-mannered and he appears as a gameskeeper and as someone cleaning up in a graveyard at the very end or this yeah yeah graveyard-esque place and um which is also kind of interesting. And then she sits and has a conversation with this person, creature, who's, I guess, supposed to be Kit Satan, but he's so mild-mannered, you wouldn't guess it, really. <laughs> Which is, I think, kind of interesting. Um, and there's a hilarious scene earlier on, with, which is kind of a witch's Sabbath, and she's kind of dancing with someone, and it turns out this person is supposed to be Satan, but it turns out that, that that's sort of someone who had entered a, a, a pact with the actual devil to to i don't know for some reason but it's a it's a a, a, a poser a fake satan and, and she was very disdainful of that person especially since he you know he was kind of creepy and sort of typical typical which is sabbath type satan and she didn't like him she was disdainful and she ran away like she's very very much going she wants everything on her own terms and she's not going to be sort of become you know do typical type satan, satanist things um, yeah, so I gave it five stars because I do think it's very, very good, very well written, very strange, and I embrace the strangeness, and I really embrace the fact that she got away from this terrible family and that she's very happy in the end. 
um, the fact that she thinks of herself as a witch and a follower of Satan. Um, uh, I think, I don't know where, where I fall on that. Um, it's as if it sort of seems secondary to her own status, her own sense of peace and well-being um, as, as someone who's been able to, to break away from conformity in that sense. Um, yeah, I think she's doing sort of interesting things with 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 the the uh, that stuff at the end here. I'm looking at the end again and how um, she she's sort of her own person, even if she is you know aligns herself with with that that side of things, so to speak. But she's she's still going to be someone who will always take things uh, on her own terms. In a, if that makes sense, she's never going to. Mm, subordinate herself to to authorities in that sense whatever kind they they, they are <laughs> and so yeah that's those are my comments on lolly willows so where does that leave us where does it leave me with my reading for this week uh decisions need to be made so i am almost at the end of my audible book which was the roundhouse by louise erdrich which which I still really, really like, perhaps not quite as much as the beginning part. I mean, it's, it's funny, <laughs> a book becomes less, you, you like it less or more as you go on. And maybe I've fallen out of love with it a tiny bit, but it's still very, very good. It's just, it hasn't held, it hasn't been as wonderful as, you know, all the way through. But in general, it's still very good and I'm almost at the end. And I'll, I'll, I guess I'll check to talk to you a bit more about it next week. Um, and then, so I'm also, I haven't decided to give up yet on, I'm still, uh, even though I read very little of it, The Empire of Pain, the story of the Sackler brothers or the Sackler family, the Purdue Oxy, Oxycontin, Oxycodone um, family. I want to continue with that, but what I will set aside is the Grimm biography, I think. I'll set that aside for now until I can to commit to it more fully because I do want to read other things and so the other things I want to read at some point I do need to get back to my net galley that I've kind of set aside and I won't even mention it but but I do want to do that and so I do need to get started on the book I'm going to review which is the Japanese tales of um Lafcadio Hearn so those will be it's basically a group of fairy tale, Japanese fairy tales as translated by Lafcadio. So this 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 I can take in in little snippets. So I should get started on that too. And then in terms of the uh, the read along for me, I do want to continue with something. And I'm I was I had some options. I thought about going back to the Betty Smith which I had set aside earlier, so Tree Girls in Brooklyn, but I don't think I want to do that right now. And so the one that I'm sort of thinking about starting is uh, this one. And mainly, I mean, part of the reason is, is it's the same type of uh, era. It's it's post, it, it has to do with World War One, And I do think that World War One is in the background of Lolly Willows. It's very much in the background. A couple people, minor characters, um, pass away there or get killed there, and there's mention made of it, but it's very much in the background. But I do think it's sort of there, and so this is another one where it's kind of perhaps not so much in the background. Ford's, Ford Maddox for the Good Soldier, pretty doable and beautiful Oxford Classics edition, uh, Oxford University Press edition, I should say. So maybe I will start this one. Gosh, that's a long introduction. That's always nice. <laughs> it doesn't start until it's it's so that's even shorter. It's called The Good Soldier: A Tale of Passion. And uh, on the original it's his his name is Ford Maddox Hoofer, H U E F F E R. Which remind which kind of makes me mem have memories of him being more Germanic and maybe changing the name to sound less Germanic for obvious reasons in the, in the 20s or after World War One, That's interesting. So yeah, that's the actual frontage page of this novel, of this short, shorter novel. So yeah, maybe I'll get started on this one. And 
Okay, there's two, 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 two. There's a couple other things that I would like to get to. I would kind of like to start with Annie Dillard. I keep putting it off. I don't know why I'm afraid of maybe not liking it or something. But I really should just throw my hat in the ring with it. And then I really kind of want to go back to the world of Anna Karenina, which I set aside because of the recognitions. And now I'm done with the recognitions. And I kind of want to finish it because I was really, really enjoying it. And I'll have to figure out where it was. Oh, I've got the bookmark here. I'll probably go back a little ways. No, I wasn't this far. Oh, maybe? No, I don't think I was that far. No, I don't think I was on the 300s already. No, I'll have to figure out where I was. Um, no, maybe I was. Maybe I was. It was going pretty quickly. Now that I think of it. So, yeah. We'll see how things go. I <laughs> Every week is different. We don't know. And, um... Yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. I've been pretty bad in terms of keeping up. I did one uh, tag video, and I do have a couple of tags. The Moody the Moody Reader tag, which everyone else has done by now, which I might do. And then I was tagged by Sonia in <laughs> the Pain and Joy tag, which is sort of hilarious considering <laughs> we know where my preferences lie. So, but I'll do that one too. And depending on where my you know, where I'm at in terms of ideas for, for videos to do, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll make a video. We'll see how things go. I hope everyone is doing well. And yeah, thank you for watching my rambly, rambly thoughts. And yeah, if you've, if, you're, if you've read these, if you've read Lolly Willows, if you have thoughts on these novels, uh, Ford Medics Ford, Love Cardio Hearn, Annie Dillard, I know that um, some people love Annie Dillard. Yeah, please comment below and I will talk to you very soon. Thank you all for watching and subscribing. Hello, new subscribers. Glad to have you along for the ride and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.